Greetings. This video I'm going to demonstrate one of the problems with this game. And we're going to fly a Concorde from Reykjavik and head off to Anchorage. And the reason I'm choosing this particular destination is simply because it goes through the polar cap on the North Pole. And as you can see it's off the standard map. And this is where it gets interesting. See, let's go off and choose the Concorde now. I'm going to use the Concorde even though it's not going to reach there simply because of speed. That's the only reason. So I'm going to set it up with a full tank. Save me having to fill up. Take all the passengers off and remove the load. Right, let's go have a look at this now, so you can see what happens. And hopefully, I really hope, that Rotos takes notice of this. Alright, let's get all our engines started up. Full brakes on, full throttle, let's go. Landing gear up. Set our climb to the correct site. Let's bring the nose up. Right, the most fuel efficient altitude is going to be anywhere between 38,000 and 39,500. That's the sonic boom. Let's accelerate the time now. We'll set it for 900 knots. Let's accelerate that. You can hear the throttles coming back down a bit. The purpose of this video is to show you there is a problem with the navigation when you're inside the polar circle, especially when you go above 75 degrees north. Obviously this is going to take a bit of time. 
stick with me. We can push the speed right up to a thousand knots if we want. We're not trying to conserve fuel. You'll notice that the vertical speed indicator on the autopilot is all over the place. All over the place. That's a complete disaster. Now, as soon as I set this for level flight, we encounter a problem. Yeah, lovely level flight, but that's it. That's all you're going to get. You've now got level flight, but you can't accelerate the time. As soon as you accelerate the time, your altitude changes constantly. There's no, no reason why it should do that. That's an error in programming. I think the Rotos needs to sort this out in their engine. Let's just go full power. Just off the coast of Greenland. little bit of a way to go still. You see in the bottom right hand corner there, there's your coordinates. So you're now sitting at 69 and a half degrees north and 32 and a half degrees west. And this is a pain in the butt. You've got to keep resetting the time to accelerate. Another problem you have is when you switch over to this view, on the top right hand side, just above your landing gear, speed, heading, altitude. Sometimes it'll switch off your altitude so you won't be on autopilot on altitude. And then when you switch back to this view, you're not realizing that it's been switched off by the program. You can find your plane crashing into the ground pretty rapidly. Let's hurry up and get to this arctic circle. So 
so you keep coming up to these waypoints but you'll notice that each waypoint has a circle around it that shows you which is the active waypoint you're heading towards it's a bit different when you get inside the arctic circle suddenly there's not a single waypoint to be seen and there's no how, should, how do you say five mile radius around that waypoint so you don't even know which one you're heading for or which direction to travel and you're going to see the problem in a little bit 71 degrees north you've got five degrees to go burning off the fuel pretty rapidly. I'm just going to change the autopilot speed control while we're doing this. I'm trying to figure out what some of these mean. I'm not a pilot, so I don't know. I do know that TO is take off. And then you've got FLX, which is flight with flaps. CL is cruising level. Now, I don't know what the ATHR is all about, but I do know that that's idle. on cruising level hmm. it should stop somewhere around about 700 knots Keep it at 725. I deliberately don't activate the autopilot speed. And the reason I do that, or that I don't do it, is because sometimes you pick up a tailwind. Now, see when you switch to the navigation panel, right here in the center, you can see on the top left hand corner of your, nav your radar screen, it says four knots, and it gives you the direction that the wind's coming from. It also shows that the temperature is minus 89 degrees Celsius and minus 126 Fahrenheit good idea to put your anti-ice on like that otherwise you could have ice building up on your wings just behind the leading edge I don't think it's been programmed into this game but you could get ice building up on that leading edge which then reduces your lift on the wings and also increases the mass of the aeroplane. 
that could be a serious problem to continued flight. back up to speed again. Greenland's a lot bigger than you think. It's a shame that these buttons and controls for autopilot are not available in the navigation screen. It would be very easy for them to move that radar screen to the right or to the left a little bit so that there's no gap between the nose and your level flight indicator, I forget what it's called, your gyroscope. And that way you'd be able to control your speed using your controls here. You could control the direction with your autopilot. You can engage it and disengage it. But I haven't thought of that yet. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. All right, let's disengage our autopilot speed. Now the altitude here is the height above ground level, not above sea level. Your vertical speed indicator is your altitude above sea level that it controls. Now that's quite important. Let's see, 75.2 degrees north. I think pretty soon you're going to find that this is going to flip over to the polar ice cap. And that's where it gets interesting. And there you have it. All right. See where the plane is. See the direction it's heading in. And here's your route on the left hand side of the screen. And nowhere on your route is there a waypoint. So you can't even tell which way you've got to go to your next waypoint. And it says it's 850 nautical miles away from where I am. Right, well, that ain't no good. So I'm just going to head over towards it. Check this point in time is roughly 270 degrees west. Now, technically, these should be radial degrees, but they aren't. So you've got to watch yourself with this. So when it says 270 degrees on your autopilot, it's not accurate because you flip out. Now look on your navigation panel. In fact, let's go have a look at this. It says you should be heading about 300 degrees. 
to your next waypoint. And that's not even correct. Right, let's blow some time here. definitely heading in the correct direction because if you have a look on the autopilot switch here route waypoint number 11 is 800 nautical miles and decreasing I got really confused by this to begin with. So what I was doing is I thought you had to bring the two together. But while I do this, just watch your waypoint there and you'll see that it suddenly decreases until there's no increase or decrease. Right, when there's no increase or decrease, then you're running parallel to where your waypoint is. So you have to turn 90 degrees to that, which is going to be about 294. find out when we actually get to the pink line for your route. Now this is really bad programming. They should have done something about this. Because this isn't linear travel. This is radial travel around the pole. just blast it through so you can see this. Let's go to 281. See if that increases. Oh yeah. That is going a lot faster now. Six hundred nautical miles. I bet we're sitting at about fifty percent fuel by now. No, not quite. Your autopilot says 270, but when you look at the protractor around the plane, it's definitely not the case. So you've got a dynamic protractor, but you don't have a dynamic autopilot, and this is the problem. The autopilot should be based upon the protractor.
engines seem to be fine. They're not overheating, the oil's not burning up. So let's see if we can figure out where this waypoint is. Okay, that's slowing down. That's a lot faster. That's also pretty quick. So maybe it's somewhere in between. Maybe it's on 255. I'm using the protractor to get 255. Check on our navigation. Yeah, that says we're going the right direction now. That waypoint is definitely invisible. Oops. Now where have we popped out? 79 degrees north, 36.2 degrees west. And we've got to head off to 289. Something has gone horribly wrong here. Now watch this, we're going to go back into the polar ice cap again. This is where it just goes crazy. This is really bad programming. Wonderful. And there we are again. We're now zero degrees west, right above England, 75.2 degrees north. We have suddenly jumped. <laughs> uh, a thousand nautical miles east of where we left the Arctic Circle and come back in again. I don't know how they've done this. They, they've made a mistake somewhere. And they really need to fix it. Because, look, the fuel has still gone down. We have actually traveled that distance. Now we've got to go back to our position. Uh, yeah, it's a real problem. So, well done, Rotos. Serious problem you've created here. And you really, really ought to fix it. Right. 295 is the bearing I should be on. Bang on.
No, we keep going down. Two more to do this. hundred nautical miles. I find it very interesting that they've programmed the moon to keep the phase with the actual moon. So what you see in game is realistic and comparable to what you would see outside in the sky as you look at it. So if you're playing real time, the moon phase you see in the game is the same as it is in real life. And then they've got the lens flare, which I think is particularly good. That's not all. You can actually zoom in. Just a tap on the screen gets it to its default view. I mean, you can zoom in, but you can zoom out. Seems a logical feature. Now, it's telling us we've gone off course a little bit. You see, this is where the programming's gone wrong. Your directional bearing to route waypoint number 11 is quite different to what it really is because it's hidden away and because it's angular it's instead of uh, straight lines. still 76.3 degrees north but we are going west we did get up to 36 degrees we're now up to 24 degrees for the second time I don't think the polar area is quite as big as they've done on this. See, now we're starting to head south again. 
76.1 degrees south. Uh, you don't want to go out of 76 because that'll be a problem. We are getting pretty close to Route 11 waypoint. Never can tell where these things are, you just got to find it by pure chance. Well below half tank now. Oh yeah, crash landing. Just watching the distance to the root waypoint. hit it. So all you have to do stay on that pink line now that you know where the root waypoint is and all the other hidden waypoints are along that line. You just have to get the first one and then you can complete your mission. So we'll bring the speed back down. See if we can conserve a bit of fuel and just maybe, just maybe We'll make it to Anchorage for another Alaskan airport, maybe Fairbanks. I doubt it.
Right, I'm going to stop recording this session and I'll record another one and if I can figure out how to join the videos together I will and I will see you in the next session. Sayonara. Right, here we go. What I've done, you'll notice the speed is dropping dramatically. There's good reason for that. I switched off two of the engines. The reason I've done that is to conserve fuel. Half the engines running at three quarters, two thirds of the speed. So half the fuel consumption. So it should technically increase the range if they program this correctly. Watch this, we're getting to the next routing point at five miles, five nautical miles. Here we go. There we go, route 18. I've not diverted off this pink line at all. My god, I hate adverts. Eighteen point one quarter tons. I did say in my previous recording that I wasn't a pilot. I do know a fair bit about flying because my stepfather was a pilot. He was the chief training captain for Air Zimbabwe. He went into retirement, or oh, when was that now? 1998. So he used to train everyone. He taught me a great deal. Here we come to Route 19. Have a look on the bottom left hand corner. And it's going to flip. And there we go, Route 19. Haven't had to make any course adjustments at all. Once you're on this pink line, stay on it. Through the polar ice caps. Both through the Arctic and the Antarctic circles. It's just finding that first waypoint that's invisible. Once you do that you should be fine. The only issue you'll face is when you come out of this arctic circle. If you're on autopilot it is automatically going to send you in the wrong direction and you've got to be very quick to switch autopilot off. Sitting at 75.9 degrees north now. So, when you come out of the Arctic Circle, let's take a look at these two numbers here. It tells you that you're heading on bearing 245 on both of them. Now that's quite important, because that's the direction you've got to head off in to get to your next waypoint when you come out of the Arctic Circle. 
now saying 244. It's closing in pretty quick. See now autopilot says 353. Don't take any notice of that. That's totally incorrect. What you can look at is the 243. It's only a hundred degrees difference, but if you think about it, hundred degrees is more than just standard quarter of a circle. So you'll find that when you come out the Arctic Circle, you'll be going perpendicular to the direction you really need to be going in. Wireless charges are useful. Okay. I'm going to try and do this manually. See, I'm 36 nautical miles from my next waypoint. Should be 203. Oops. easy to do. This will just suddenly pop out. There we go. nautical miles to the next one. 74.9 degrees north. We're going to drop out of the Arctic Circle shortly. Yeah, you better switch it off. See the speed? It says stall. where it all goes pear-shaped. As soon as you come out the Arctic Circle, the whole thing just goes wrong.
out to level flight and head to 235. Back up to cruising altitude. And that's the problem with going through the Arctic Circle. Yes, I got my waypoints. Hmm. Okay, we better sort out our speed. We've got a long way to go. All right. I'll set up a new recording for when we might start to run out of fuel. So if there's going to be a crash landing. You'll see it. So here we are on our Concorde flight from Reykjavik to <laughs> to Alaska. I don't think we're going to make it to Fairbanks Airport. I'm trying. I've switched off two of the engines. So, I don't know if that's a good idea or not, whether it creates additional drag. It's debatable. Depends on how they programmed this thing. We're getting fairly close to an airport of some sort. There's a mass of waypoints. And looking at the fuel that I've got left, well, I shifted some into the one tank so that I don't run out completely. Yes, I know. You're probably thinking, you idiot, you've got a fixed amount of fuel. Yeah but at least it'll switch on to a single engine instead of running out of power altogether. There will be one engine that runs, so it'll automatically cut the power down by a further 50%. However, 50% and the number of engines still means that you get two-thirds of the power. So it might just be enough to keep it at altitude. And considering you're running at uh, 39,000 feet, that's pretty good. I think the glide slope on a Concorde is going to be round about 3,000 feet per minute for the vertical speed. Low now. Ah, huh, there's Fairbanks there. Head off to Fairbanks.
think we'll make it to Fairbanks. Two nautical miles. Right. Not quite close enough. No runway orientation yet. Alright, let's dial down the altitude. Not a descent rate you could use in real life. That's just nuts. Okay. We have a runway. Here goes. That's what you don't need when you're coming into land.
All right, we've got to control our speed coming in. Hundred, four hundred approaching minimums. Two hundred, one hundred, fifty, forty, thirty. Oh, if you put brakes on and the thing goes sideways. What is wrong with this? Such bad programming. <sighs> what can you do? Yeah, Rotas has got a lot of work to do to fix this. Why is it when you're coming into land like this? You know, everything's great. Touchdown, perfect, not an issue. As soon as I apply the brakes, then it veers off to the right every single time a coconut. And it's just the Concorde. Whatever the problem is, it's just the Concorde. Look at it. Put the brakes on and then it goes sideways. Nice one. Well done, Rotas. Well, that brings the end to that. So you can fly from Reykjavik to Fairbanks in Alaska using a Concorde.